And there's how they turned out. They were deformed terribly. No such thing as a pseudogene. The pseudogene may function as a decoy to lure away destructive enzymes. Discover Magazine of 03. We could spend all day on DNA sequencing, but you know, it could be. We have similar DNA to other animals because we have the same designer. You know, similar bridges would have similar blueprints, wouldn't they? Similar cars would have similar instructions on how to build them, how to make them. Man has a pretty good understanding of how cars work. My daddy started us off boys, started us boys off working on cars when we were, you know, seven years old. I've had 128 cars, I believe. I've rebuilt the motors, the transmissions, the wobbleator shafts, the differentials, the high-speed Knuton valves, and the muffler bearings. I have a pretty good understanding of how cars work. But understanding the operation of a car does not explain the origin of the car. Big difference. See? Let's suppose your son turns 16. All of my kids did a few years ago. Your son comes up and says, hey, Dad, <clears throat> I got my license. Let me see that thing, son. Let me see your license. Come on. Wow, son. That's a lousy picture. It is a good likeness, though. He says, hey, Dad, uh, can I drive the car? Well, son, your mom and I knew this day was coming. The car is a very complicated machine. Did you know there are 3,000 bolts required to hold a car together, and one nut can scatter it all over the highway? <laughs> we don't think you're ready for the whole car, son. We're going to let you slowly evolve into the car. This year, we're going to give you 10%. Next year, maybe just a little more. Hey, what good is 10% of a car? That's what you put in a junkyard. How many things have to be right on a car to make it work? Like thousands of things? Hmm? How many things would have to be wrong to make it stop working? Any one of the many thousands of things. Like not having the keys, you know, not having any gas in it, you know. Take the distributor, distributor cap off and run a pencil around the inside and put it back on. Boy, they'll never find that one. Take the spark plug wire off, run a, put a doorbell wire in there, shove it back down, feed the doorbell wire through the firewall, and weave it through the fabric of the front seat. <laughs> Do that when they're going on their honeymoon, you know, get in the car, wow, let's go, honey. Bam, ooh, ooh, what was that? Okay. There's a thousand things to make your car quit running. <laughs> Probably 10,000 ways to stop a car from running. Shove a potato in the exhaust pipe, you know, <laughs> watch what happens. Uh, I don't want to give you any more ideas, okay? But, uh, <laughs> There are thousands of differences between, him, uh, between <laughs> humans and chimpanzees. But if you think a percentage of similarity proves a relationship, let me show you the research I've been doing. I discovered clouds are 100% water. Watermelons are 97%. It's only 3% difference. That proves they're related. Jellyfish are 98%. Missing link. And so are snow cones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. We got the proof, okay? Then they tell them fossils prove evolution. I say, guys, you've got to be kidding. This textbook says, evidence of evolution from the fossil record. Oh, no, don't give me that. That's a lie. There is no fossil record. There's a bunch of bones in the dirt. It's not a record, okay? You're putting your interpretation on those bones they're digging out of the dirt. There is no fossil record. This textbook says, evolution is a fact. The fossil record provides some of the strongest evidence that species evolved over time. This is silly. There is no fossil record. You don't look back into time. You look at a bunch of bones you dug out of the dirt. And you put your interpretation on them, okay? Fossils only exist in the present. They don't exist in the past. I mean, you're digging them up, and it's, it's 2005, okay? <laughs> you can't say, wow, this fossil is 40 million years old. You don't know that, okay? All we do is put our interpretation on the fossils. But the kids are taught, fossils contribute to our understanding of evolution. Kids, keep in mind, dead animals do not reproduce or evolve. Darwin said, if my theory is true, numberless intermediate species ought to have you know, been found in the fossil record. Well, I'm sorry. This guy said, since Darwin, many of these links have been found. Oh, they are lying to you. No missing links have been found. Even David Robb, who believes in evolution, says, in the years after Darwin, his advocates hoped to find predictable progressions. In general, these have not been found. Yet the optimism has died hard, and some pure fantasy has crept into textbooks. Oh, you're kidding. Fantasy in the textbooks? That's a fancy word for a lie. Okay? And we could spend two days on the fossil record. There's no fossil record, and there are gaps all over the place. Every place where there ought to be something, they find nothing. No evidence for how the whale evolved, or how the birds evolved, or how the flowering plants evolved. No evidence whatsoever. If you find a fossil in the dirt, all you know is... It died. 
You couldn't prove it had any kids. And you sure couldn't prove it had different kids. And why would you think a bone in the dirt can do something animals today cannot do? Which is produce something other than their kind. Luther Sunderland wrote to major evolutionists all over and said, Hey, where's the evidence for evolution? They wrote back and said, We don't have it. Somebody else has it. He wrote to Colin Patterson because Patterson has access to the largest fossil collection in the world. British Museum of Natural History. Nobody's got more fossils than them. Patterson wrote a book about evolution, but he didn't show any missing links. So Sunderland wrote him a letter and said, uh, Excuse me, uh, why didn't you show the missing links in your book? I'd like to see a picture of the missing link. Patterson wrote back and said, I fully agree with your comments on the lack of evolutionary transitions in my book. If I knew of any, fossil or living, I would certainly have included them. I will lay it on the line. There is not one such fossil. There are no missing links. The whole chain is missing. It's not a link they're looking for, folks. Even Stephen Gould said the absence of fossil evidence is a nagging problem for evolution. Yeah, it sure is. Stephen Gould died with a set of my videos on his shelf in his library. I hope he watched them. I donated them to him years ago, way before he died. Hopefully he watched them and got saved. I don't know. So Niles Eldridge and Stephen Gould have kind of resurrected the punctuated equilibria idea that came actually from Richard Gouldschmidt. Gouldschmidt said, the first bird hatched from a reptilian egg. They got so frustrated looking for missing links, they couldn't find any. They said, well, this just proves evolution happened quickly. Oh, I see. Yeah. And this bird that hatched from the reptile egg, uh, excuse me, who did it marry? Hmm. Don't you have to have two in the same place of the opposite sex? I mean, what if you get two males? Huh? And don't they have to be at the same time in history? What if one's born just 10 years before the other one? Oh, just missed it. You've got to get them in the same place of the opposite sex at the same time, and they've got to be interested. You've got a whole bunch of problems, okay? Serious problem. Then they tell the kids to think critically. Which theory best describes the organism's evolution, gradualism or punctuated equilibria. Look what they do. Kids, which theory is the best explanation, slow evolution or fast evolution? Do you see how they're giving the kids two options, both of which are false? Which is correct, boys and girls? Elephants are orange or elephants are pink? Oh, oh man. Mom, what should I write for this one? <laughs> I don't know, honey. Go do your homework. They're neither one. You realize how frustrating this is for Christian kids to go through public schools and have this kind of stuff day after day after day and how it wears at their faith? And they finally just start giving the evolution answers. And 75% of the kids from Christian homes are being destroyed and losing their faith going through these public schools. That's not thinking critically. This textbook says, which is correct, boys and girls? Did evolution happen gradually or in short leaps and punctuated equilibria? They give them two options. Evolution happened slowly or evolution happened quickly. These guys are not capable of thinking outside the box. It didn't happen at all. Is that an option? But I guarantee if a kid puts it didn't happen at all on his test question, the teacher's going to count it wrong. I debated Dr. Pigliucci from Knoxville, Tennessee, UT, UT Knoxville. I said, Dr. Pigliucci, you've studied and taught evolution of plants for 10 years. You've received $650,000 in grant money to study the evolution of plants. What's the best evidence you know of for evolution? That was my question. His answer was, the evolution of whales. I said, just exactly what kind of plant is a whale anyway? Hmm? Yeah. He said, the hippo is evidence for evolution because it's in the process of adapting to an aquatic way of life. Hippos prove for evolution because it likes to go in the water. Wow, I like to go in the water too. What's that mean? <laughs> Evolution's a shell game. Everybody thinks that somebody else has the evidence. The biologist says, oh, we don't have it. The geologist has it. The geologist says, oh, we don't have it. The anthropologist has it. It's a shell game with one major difference. You know how they put the P down there and try to get you confused, you know, which one has the P? Um, the difference is there's no P under any of them. Nobody has the evidence. Nobody. They're all lying. They say, what about horse evolution? Yes, boys and girls, you see this? The four-toed horse evolved to the one-toed horse. That's a lie proven wrong 55 years ago. The hyrax is the so-called four-toed horse. They're still alive today in Africa and, and Turkey. <laughs> There's still a little bit of critter. There's one right there, a hyrax. They don't 